so regarding the psychology of the digital second self, I definitely think about that a lot because um, I'm an artist and I feel, I went to school at PNC and I feel like they really ingrained on us that we have to market ourselves and we have to keep a certain image. And so I'm like, I feel obligated to have an Instagram like so that, you know, curators can contact me because it feels like even my website isn't the first, like their first choice is like they see me on Instagram, they look through my work and they decide if they want to contact me or not. And it feels like that's my gateway to opportunities. And it really is confusing because, for example, I don't really... I don't really like to take like selfies or really post my personal life on Instagram. I try to keep it more of like my artwork and the things that I'm doing, but it seems like it's the selfies and the going out and like, where did you go eat? Where did you go out to party? It feels like people care more about that. And with this new Instagram algorithm, they like kind of dictate whether you're important or not, which is so scary. Like, and I do... I will sometimes like delete my Instagram because I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is like, I feel like I'm seeking validation from my cell phone. And it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I should quit social media and like just try to network in person or I don't know. Do I become invisible if I don't have an Instagram anymore? Yeah. It's a weird one. I mean, I think I, I'm hearing a lot of things in that that's really cool. I mean, among one of them that's interesting is that, like, you know, I just kind of automatically I'm hearing that just kind of individual kind of personal, you know, introspective identity and, like, what we can simply call brand mm -hmm. have honestly started interfucking um, in a way that just, I don't think most of our species has ever had to deal with for the last, I don't know how many hundred year cycles. Um, and I mean, with that, there comes the question of like, you know, like, okay, so our like hyper performative identities and our hyper internal identities are, you know, these structures and platforms are at least are kind of encouraging us to basically like put them in an immersion blender and pipe it out into the prettiest 3D mold we can find and serve this to our audience, you know, the question. And then, so there's this kind of interesting thing that I'm noticing um, over time. And I think around 2011, I was introduced to this idea of disambiguation, um, which, um, from what I understand, basically means like, you know, how can you just take something that's been curated for you for so long and just do it yourself? And so, I mean, the issue with social media and kind of personhood is that, you know, like, is personhood for ourselves or is it for other people? And ultimately, that line is blurry. And, you know, and the answer is for me at least both um, yes and. Um, and so, like with this emerging technology, you know, are kind of we the technologies that we have and the opportunities and infrastructure we have to basically work with and manipulate identity formation is being backed by individuals and projects and owners and stakeholders that want clicks. They don't give a shit about what we become, what we do. Um, I have friends who have like committed suicide on Instagram before, not live, but like you know, like. They don't care. Um. Hi, I'm Angela, and I'm researching a book on social media. So how it affects people is really important. I mean, the people who create these networks, I mean, I think they have a lot of ethical responsibilities that they're not living up to. And um, like there are, no, there are a few laws that govern how they can create um, a, a platform. Um, and so, so, I mean, they're not necessarily creating platforms that are healthy or that are good for people. They're creating platforms that make money that people get addicted to, whether it's, and if it, you know, causes you to like, I don't know, get divorced, lose your mind. They don't care. They just want, people are just trying to make, trying to make money. And um, what the platforms do is, I mean, they, they, they collect so much data on you. I mean, all software online collects a lot of data on you. But um, social platforms, 
know everything about you, basically. Um, I mean, everything. People spend like hours and hours on social media, and that's so. As, so these networks, I mean, like they're so entangled with our lives because we spend all our lives on them. Um, and it's interesting that people will spend like 14 hours on social media a week um, wondering what their friends will do, but they won't spend one hour a week uh, figuring out how the social networks work, like what the algorithm is, uh, what, they're, um, what they know about you, how they're monitoring you. And so it's just sort of odd. I mean, like people have created these big networks um, and they, they tell the public, oh, this is how you um, can get more publicity. This is how you can get more business. This is how you can make friends or date. Um, and no one like questions it. Like, no, no one questions like the motivation behind any of the platforms. And I find that bizarre. And pe people should start like questioning like how the networks, different platforms make them feel, if they're improving their lives or making, you know, if being on like Instagram is improving your life or making you feel worse. Um, I don't know, that's all I have to say. Uh, yeah, it's sometimes uh, hard to tell if social media is making you feel good or bad, I think. Um, it's like uh, most things I think that people get addicted to, it's like, uh, you know, there's like a certain amount of dopamine that you get from it, and so that's good, like it feels good, but uh, yeah, obviously, ultimately, it's like, at least in my experience, it's definitely been uh, a net negative. Um, like I've, I've actually, I see the uh, the utility of it, and I really like it um, to have communities and know where when shows are and communicate and put art up or whatever, have a conversation about politics, uh, but. But yeah, I guess I, I would dive into it and then like immediately just uh, fall off like, you know, Facebook or Instagram. It would it'd be like I would be into it for a while and then I would just, I would have this impulse to like check it and that would scare me. So I would just like limit it. But yeah, it's a weird sort of thing where it's like the good and the bad. You got to check in with yourself, I guess. And it's not always like easy to do, maybe. I mean, one thing I'm also hearing across all of this is that this really brings us face to face with a lot of vulnerability um, in a really interesting way. So I mean, for me at least, one thing I really struggle with with um, all this is that I have a movement art background. That means that anything and everything that I've ever done um, comes from practice. Everything is rehearsed. Everything is rehearsed. Um, and so then just comes in, you know, so at least in like music and dance, there's this idea that like, even if something is choreographed, even if something's rehearsed, you can still put real feeling into it. And so then there's the question of then like, how do we be our authentic, how do we be like authentic on social media? And you know, there's a lot of this like, you know, like, you know, there's, oh man, um, you know, there are people who talk about how like, everything is performativity and if everything is performativity everything is fake or everything is real um but like let's hearken back to the early 2000s of myspace when people like had i forgot forgot what the feature was called but that one where um we were able to actually just like make one post it had one module and everyone could see what you've done and like i just remember people like actually just saying how their days went and just like you know yeah, bulletin posts. Um, because like, you know, back then, like, you know, like back in like at least AIM and MySpace, I remember like we would 
talk to the internet like we talk to other people. Our conversational dialects were still that of like conversational speech. Um, at least in my circles, um, we've gotten a lot more ironic. Everything, you know, like we have, we have like maybe like a fourth to fifth, to, you know, like I'm a shit poster, right? And so like, you know, we, we use, you know, we use, uh, we've been basically, we've basically trained our, each other and ourselves to basically use irony and basically fakeness as a way to basically foil how we actually feel. And, you know, I'd like to get back to a point where we actually get to say what we feel. And that saying like, hi, I'm sad and lonely and tired itself means something. Um, I'd like to get back to that point um, because like right now, like the art that I'm doing, um, like I just did a shoot like a couple days ago that was just basically just me angrily writing the phrase value neutral on things like and the fact that I have to do that to at least get an idea that you know like you know like being shot at and just having a sense of like this is who I am this isn't who I'm trying to be this isn't a first person impression this is like you know like we've lost a lot of an ability to be unfiltered individuals and even when we are unfiltered individuals on like Facebook and like in these curated pro like when was the last time we saw someone have a nervous breakdown on Facebook it's not pretty um, they're used to, um, and this is like weird and messed up, but like on Facebook, on like on MySpace, like in the earlier ages of AIM and stuff, like when people had bad times, like when we were going down, like when things were hard, like we responded to that struggle in a completely different way. Our empathy has changed. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying with that. Um, I would say that that makes sense to a degree, but I think that what I would suggest in my own personal life is stepping away from, or using, I, I would say using social media more as a tool than an identity. I think that you, like separating those two ideas would be the most helpful in saying that, you know, there, because there's, there's a balance to everything and, and finding that balance would be, instead of talking to the internet like it's a person and like it's, you know, people or, you know, your friendships, you're, you're investing, you know, yourself, you're investing your time into something that's um, that's non tangible, that's that that can destroy you, that can hurt you, that can, you know, I mean, there's trolls, there's there's horrible things on the internet that can, and it can really turn in a really ugly way. The way that the world won't, the way that you know you can have a one on one conversation and kind of recover from that. Whereas the internet, I mean, it's it is you know ruthless. So I think finding that like that balance and having that like, you know, using it as a tool rather than an identity. That's a real. That's a really good point. Um, so I just wanted to say that, uh, like, when you post your blog or pictures or life on Facebook, um, you don't. I mean, like, say you post a blog on Facebook, um, or I'm trying to think of another blog platform. You don't. You don't own that. If you get political and um, Facebook decides they don't like you, they can kick you off and you would lose all your writing. So it's better to have a website and um, probably most people will have a website, but I know some people use Facebook or other types of platforms, social platforms as their like website or blog, um, but it's better to have a website, try to get people to go to your website um, than to use Facebook as a blog or another social platform as a blog because then you don't own your your work um, Facebook does so yeah. um, but back um, just kind of addressing the like internet is cruel and heartless part of that um, I mean when I was 16 I was going through some pretty terrible stuff and like one stranger, she claimed to be like, you know, she was on a forum, 55 year old woman, um, never shared her name, never shared her address, would still email me every three days to make sure I was alive. She didn't know me. She didn't know who I was. She didn't want me to know who she was. And like, so yeah, no, the internet's definitely cruel. But the other thing about it that's really interesting and terrifying is that like, I think that I, I didn't have the benefit of having enough English fluency when I was growing up to connect with people and to empathize properly. 
Um, I didn't have anyone around me. Um, so a lot of people have a world to ball, fall back to like outside of the internet, but this will sound absurd, but like that isn't the case for a lot of people. Um, I know the internet's a tool. I know it's a device. But on the other hand, there are also people there who will uplift you and also put you down, as you said. But also, like, you know, I've had my life, life, life saved by strangers um, who, well, never know who they are. Um, I think that treating it as a tool is definitely, like, the most appropriate and sensible kind of way of handling this wild technology right now. But it's more than just a tool right now, from what I can tell. Like, it's a community. Like, I... Like, oh my God, I think my favorite example of the internet right now, um, and it's unfortunate because it's Tumblr, but um, there, the level of support that I've seen from marginalized minorities, the ability for these people to get together and hold each other's hands through problems that no one, including me, like, you know, we can't understand them. And they're here and they're capable of doing that. That, like, we could call a community a tool, completely correct. But there's still that spark. Like, how do we carry that spark? How do we keep that going and not degrade our entire identities and our communities in the process? Like, you know, like, you know, like how do we get this ethereal and tangible? Like, how do we get these things to bridge? Like, we, they're not the same. They are and aren't at the same time. That paradox is something we're going to need to work out. And, and like, you know, in part, I think that a huge part of what's happening on the internet now, like with a lot of this anger and this politics is that, you know, like at least what I'm hearing and seeing is that like, I hear nothing but pain. I hear isolation, I hear loneliness, I hear hunger for love. Um, and like, we have to find a way to give, the, give people that. And like, I think we're close. And I think that once we get a handle on that, we have to be really careful about it too. Um, I remember like, uh, like a decade ago and like a lot of this was new, um, like, I joined Flickr and I would post photography there and we had a nice community of friends and we would all like, um, you know, we would meet up once a month and we go out take photos and then we would share them and then we would talk about it and we would see each other regularly and all. And that, that, that felt good. I mean, there was no, um, at that time, most of us would just pay the 25 bucks a year for Flickr and our interactions and we had groups and we would have discussions about photography and stuff and about life in Portland. We did projects together on Portland and all of that was great. Um, but I feel like, and then, but then our, um, I feel like it was more authentic because, uh, because we were just, we were paying Flickr and we were just like a group hanging out together. And now the incentives are such that, um, since we are not paying, we're kind of being used uh, by the platforms for you know uh, the, whatever content that we're creating, and as a, as a result, uh, it's it's losing some of the authenticity, and it's hard to create that uh, community unless you already have it created in some other way outside. Uh, and that's how I have I have found it to be. Um, it's like either if you're there for like a, a purpose of you know, let's say Instagram, you're there for like the pictures and photography, um, but then there are, you know, a bunch of other people that are there basically to promote other things and to sell products. Uh, and it's kind of hard because it's all kind of mushed together. Um, and I find it sometimes hard to like separate out, like, hey, this is like, you know, here, here are some pictures with my friends and I want to just share it with them. But then there are other people also looking at them um, and I don't know, it's, it's kind of, I feel like that the incentives are so mixed up right now, uh, on some of the larger platforms that a lot of people, including myself, have found other places to go and we have created private network instances like Slack or whatever, and a whole bunch of them where we just hang out with our friends and we completely have separated ourselves out from a public, a public facing, uh, you know, site. Um, and as a result, I've reduced my usage on like, you know, Facebook and, um, and Twitter and all that. But I also miss some of the good things that they provided. And it's, that's the balance that I'm like, having a hard time with. Like, I mean, Twitter was really great in the beginning. I made a lot of friends. I, 
it helped my uh, professional career in many ways, uh, the networking that I built over there and the people I met. Um, and all of that is like, you know, it's, it's a part of it that I miss and now I have to kind of figure out other ways to do some of those things. Um, but I guess part of me is also glad that I'm not going to Twitter and giving them my attention and they're not making as much money off of me as, you know, maybe they're making like two cents from me instead of 20 cents or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, um, I, I have this, these mixed feelings constantly about like some of the larger social media platforms. I feel like a big part of that is just how fast things have changed. Like I feel like 10 years ago, things weren't as immediate because you were accessing things more often on your computer than you were on your phone. So things like MySpace and Tumblr, like, I feel like gave people like more freedom to remain anonymous. Whereas like, I feel like things like Instagram, which I feel like it's probably one of the most popular like social media platforms right now is kind of give like, gives you, or like it makes you feel like you have to not be anonymous like you have to like curate this vision of yourself and like going back to what you were saying about being vulnerable there's actually people that are building entire art practices from being vulnerable on instagram like i think it's art girl 666 i can't remember but she or molly soda I don't know, there's like a couple of like artists that like pop up when I think of that who will, you know, will post like really unflattering pictures of themselves like right when they wake up or they're having like a panic attack and they'll like take a video of that so that they can show this like real side, like what they're really experiencing, which like it's interesting because even that becomes this curated project. Mm -hmm. And then like, and then there's also these like tropes of like, little Michaela, like that CGI Instagram person that it's like a CGI thing or like person, like this character put into like real life situations with like real people and like designer clothes and like kind of like what Instagram is making a lot of money of, which is like these young, famous, like wealthy people going on vacations and like showing all the things that they do, but it's a CGI. Like, you know what I'm saying? Thousands of followers and people wondering, you know, is this person real? Is this Photoshop? Like, what is this? So I think that's, those are like, for me, I feel like really interesting parts about this digital self or like the way, because this is like history. Like this is like things that we are going to, do a lot of research on things that are going to be in books and things that are going to affect us as like humans, like how we view ourselves and how we interact. That's, that's a good point. Um, so I wanted to say a few things. Um, people, I, okay. I do social media and branding and, um, People hang out in different spaces on the internet according to their age, their gender, the country they're from, um, the profession they work in, whether they're like, you know, like stay at home moms or like, whether they're like college kids or like senior citizens, they'll all be in different places. Like young, a younger audience is on Instagram definitely and an older audience uses LinkedIn. Um, right, so everyone is, like everyone, people just use the internet and social platforms in different ways. Um, and you said something about history that I didn't quite get, but when you're um, getting on a social platform, I would, well, I had this idea for a talk, um, like how to make a website uh, that I haven't done, uh, how to make a, a, like a website last forever or become evergreen. Um, and I think that's sort of like good advice for being on social platform, a social platform like, is your, like are your posts gonna be relevant like 10 years down the road, five years down the road, 20 years down the road? Like are, is what you're posting really that important? Like, um, 
I don't know, it's just something I like, coming from a branding perspective, you really want to find what is most meaningful to people, to your audience, or to yourself, if you're just posting, like, you're just online to yourself, like, I think you should, uh, well, I can only speak from a business perspective, really, it's just finding what is most meaningful to people, um, like, and being authentic when you're, like, just trying to get friends and tr trying to be fake, I guess, and just saying your life is, like, perfect when you're, like, getting divorced and everything's going terrible. You know, that, that doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help your friends. It doesn't help you. So being authentic is, like, the best route to go. Um, are you going to go? Yeah, you, I was just grabbing my lacroix. I mean, on that, I think that, yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the most tragic components of the internet now, where, like, being honest about our suffering doesn't help. That's fucked up. The internet's for connecting people. Um, the fact that we have to add an ask or CTA at the end of, I just lost the love of my life, can you help me? The fact that I have to make that engaging, the fact that I have to make that click, they have to make, the fact that I have to make that share for sympathy hurts me. That's up. Yeah, that's no, absolutely awful. And like, I think, yeah, I mean, that's all I have to really say. <laughs> oh, I think y'all are on a slightly different thread than I was going to bring up. Um, go, go, go. But yeah, I, I just was wondering if anyone's considered the evolution of uh, social media spaces into like uh, tangible reality out here, but also like virtual reality in there, where it's like, I don't know if y'all have ever had experience with social VR and what happens in those spaces. It's like living inside of 4chan or Facebook or anything, but also it's literally anything that you want it to be. And uh, in there, you do encounter a lot of people. Um, so a couple of things, it's like, instead of comments, you're actually talking to people, which changes it to something that isn't quite real life but much closer to it than your standard text box. And it does have a lot of that emotion that's put into your voice and that cadence when you're talking that's completely lost over text. Or even photographs or even like, you know, still like, you know, video of you and another person, although it's more engaging that way. Um, and so it's like you wind up getting in these long conversations with strangers who you like actually go out and meet in these spaces that I think you would initially, like, they're initially like very, uh, you know, everyone's in one spot because one spot's the only spot that exists and it's like the early web right now. Um, but it will eventually get to the point where it's like, yeah, that demographic hangs out in this world and that demographic hangs out in this world and this demographic hangs out over here and we don't ever want to go there. <laughs> and, and like, you know, there will be those worlds where we're just like, all right, that's quarantined. But in the meantime, it's like as we're watching this evolution progress and we're in these spaces, I know there's so many questions about it, like almost done. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's like going to revert back to something that's, it, it's like I almost wonder how much of this is going to even be relevant in like a decade because it's going to shift so fast. Like, and right now they're all like, oh, hire, you, know, you work in AR, do you want to do this project? I have this vision. And it's like in that territory right now where it's like, uh, yeah, it will be, it, it's like the concept of mixed reality. It's in there, it's coming out here and it's going to like turn me into a dragon and you into a wolf and you into a Pokemon. And like, you know, it's going to turn this room into a giant cave. <laughs> and like, you, you might see me as a Pokemon, but I might see you as like, a werewolf and it, 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 it's gonna get past the like just straight interpersonal things because those will just be discussed while I'm a werewolf and while you're a Pikachu and we're gonna talk about our depression together in this giant boat that's like you know floating in space somewhere and like it's it's just I'm wondering like if anyone's considering how this conversation will shift dramatically once we do become embedded in these um, worlds and then it's like I guess how we can combat the worst parts of that because they do mimic a lot of the worst parts of our real tangible world minus the fact that they can't touch you or punch you or anything. It's like, you know, there's, there are consequences to your actions, but they aren't the same consequences that we have here. Um, and then that also enables like different types of creativity as a result uh, and as a response. So I'm sorry. Okay. That was longer than I wanted to. Oh, I was, no, you, It's more like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like Second Life is the closest thing that you It's can, AR, right? 
Uh, so AR hasn't quite manifested yet, but it's just like you, you look at people's projects, they want it to happen. It's like you will see people who have like figured out how to do JavaScript based like facial recognition that they can mount onto their smartphone that tra turns all their friends into flamingos and like, you know, dynamic flamingos that are turning around. It's like, I cannot take the flamingo off of my body. I am just a flamingo to you. And like, um, so it's like you see these smaller one-off projects happening and then those people get acquired by larger companies to then do their like Snapchat, like friend filter VAR that then it's like, oh yeah, but if you all tune it to VR mode, then you're like in the flamingo world with your friends and it's like an ad and like, <laughs> you know, so anyway. What you were saying reminded me of that Black Mirror episode where you could block people in real life and you would yeah. just see static where they were. And that's just basically AR yeah, that's with like a brain implant Black instead Mirrors. of glasses. But um, that that's yeah. one end point. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just, um, I, I guess my main point was like, uh, like the direction of that. I'm just going to let you uh, so just a thing that's along that thread, but also to tie it back to the previous conversation. So one thing I'm noticing at least um, with, so I was an email marketer for a really long time, I'm sorry about the spam, um, but um, one of the components that I noticed about this was, you know, like the two primary KPIs that I've been measured on, well, three primary KPIs was one, do they actually buy the product? Do they open my email? And do they actually inter interact with my content? And, you know, like in copy, in like basically any form of these, like, you know, as a consumer, when I'm experiencing and interacting with media, I assume that they want me to click this button, buy this object, that this, that the starving child in the ad wants me to donate to this 501c3. Um, and so we've been really, we've really conditioned at least North American internet into understanding that engagement has an end to a means. One thing I've noticed that's actually worked in my circles that I've been really curious about everyone else and just to open this into AR is that like, I've noticed that when you deliberately shove people away, when you play hard to get with an, with an organization or a structure, it actually engages them, which is the part that really confuses me. So when I tell someone, hey, I'm starting a secret society, you need to know how these three like religious systems work or you can't get in, it self-selects for individuals. And while I do filter out like 95.8% like of the population, the rest that come are already pre-engaged and ready to roll. And like, just like, you know, just to tie this back to AR, you know, then, you know, the question there was like, it's coming, we can't do anything about it. Our best and worst qualities are being exhibited there to the extreme. We've, and we are like in the process of being conditioned to, you know, I'm at a point where I associate, oh, you want me to feel good? Oh, that means you want me to buy a product. Oh, you want me to feel good? You, you think I, I find you attractive? That means you want me to fuck you. Um, and like, and so that like, that kind of the, the like, you know, the implied and the concrete have like, in my mind as a consumer have, they, they've, they're one in the same now. Um, the implication, would you like to buy this pro, would you, would you, would you have, in, do you have interest in my store is would you like to buy my stuff? I want to hear what you have to say. Okay, well, this is sort of related to what you're saying in an offhanded way. Just the, um, men and women use the internet in different ways. Um, and we have we have different perspectives, um, and um, that's. A lot of uh, what goes on, a lot of, the, okay. The biggest, I think, the big, I'm pretty certain this is true. Um, like porn is the biggest, uh, like gets the most internet traffic of any other subject. And then the second subject is like cats. Yeah. So we don't really use the internet in the most um, efficient way or useful way. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Though on that, with the mics off, I, I'm still interested in what you have to say since you're fascinated.